What's the saddest death you have ever encountered while playing D&D? Part 2 Multiple heartaches in a single campaign. Started out with an orphaned barbarian that had worked in the iron mines his entire life. He saved enough to buy a greatsword and joined an adventuring party, swearing never to return to the mines. Literally, that was his possessions, loincloth, greatsword. The party had several great adventures together, and the gnome warlock was even teaching him to read. The party got wind that there was an evil cult operating out of one of the iron mines. So, against his better judgment, they delved in to eradicate him. After a valiant fight with an evil cleric, in which the barbarian was knocked unconscious several times, the evil cleric managed a critical hit, killing him. In an iron mine, the place he had worked so hard to escape all his life. So, I replaced the barbarian with a paladin. The paladin has a mentor that was attached to the local garrison. They had known each other for years, and she had trained him in the paladin -y ways since he was a boy. The garrison received word that lizard folk were getting uppity at the southern edge of their patrol route. So, the paladin, his mentor, and the party sally forth to rescue the outpost fort down south. They get there just in time to fend off an invasion, and the mentor stays behind to help patch up the fort while the party finishes the lizard folk. The party returns victorious a couple days later to find the fort overrun with undead. The paladin kicks in the door to the innermost keep, hoping to find his mentor. And find her he does. But she had been turned into a spawn of Kyus, so our brave paladin is forced to kill his mentor. The distraught party makes it back to town, and they visit the grave of the fallen barbarian only to find his body has been exhumed. Fast forward several adventures to when the party is chasing a necromancer, where they run into a great sword-wielding zombie. Yep, their old buddy the Barbarian was back. Rise of the Rune Lord's Adventure Path The End of Book 1 Spoilers ahead, you have been warned. I was a samurai. I was abandoned as a child and raised as a retainer and bodyguard to a local merchant, Kaijitsu. Sandpoint was my town. I spent my whole life there doing minor heroic exploits to win over the lovely daughter of a grouchy general store owner. When there was a rumble of trouble after a festival, myself and a ragged band of visitors took it upon ourselves to help. We cleared out some goblins, but our travels took us deep under the town. In the ancient ruins that Sandpoint was built over, we found horrors we were unprepared for. Foul beasts made of wrath that hunted us with fervor. A demon that almost murdered the friendly wizard who went with us. And we finally saw the puppeteer behind the machinations. A friend of mine, who I had thought previously died in a fire, was there, being mounted by a hound from somewhere beyond. As it opened its mouth and let out an unearthly noise, most of my companions fled. Only me and an old witch stood our ground. I dispatched the beast with a solid jab to its heart before turning to the evil woman. I was able to get a few blows in, but quickly I was losing more blood than she. Knowing that there was little I could do defensively, I loosened my shield and took a two-handed grip on my sword. A devastating strike was delivered and she howled in pain before giving on back. My vision was fading. I could feel my grip becoming weak. I drew in what I knew to be my last breath I would take on this good earth, and with a scream that would rattle the very pillars that surrounded us, yelled, For Sandpoint! I slashed into her stomach before she put her bastard sword through my heart. As I slumped to the ground, I saw my friends who had run off come back, ready to lay her low. My soul passed on knowing I had helped save Sandpoint. With that, my favorite character I have ever played died. I only played him two sessions. We were grossly underleveled for the big bad evil guy of the book, but we went down there mostly at my urging. My surrogate father was murdered and I was rage-filled. 
The baying of the yeth hound scared most of the party out of the room. I took a few hits which dropped me to the single digits. My buddy was healing me best I could before he was out of spells. I decided to try and just kill her, opting for a two-handed grip. I got a hit in before being dropped to negative 11 out of negative 12. I used my samurai resolve to stay on my feet for a turn and dropped her to five hit points with max damage crit. She then brought me to dead right as the group was returning from their terror stroll. They brought my body back to the city and gave me a proper burial. It was brutal and heart-wrenching, but it made for an amazing story. I loved that guy. So I was running Keep of the Shadowfell with a bunch of new players. It was the first multi-session campaign I'd ever run, I was having trouble with the immersion. The party was starting to get bored with hacking through every encounter, dang it 4e. And as a newbie DM, I wasn't entirely comfortable going off script on a published adventure. The party found their way into a room full of hobgoblins, who had a caged giant jumping smiter. By luck of the dice, the party managed to kill all of the hobgoblins before they could free the spider. They were free to go to the next room. But the archer wanted to try to tame the spider. I let her roll a few times. She tried to calm it down, offer it food, etc. But she didn't do particularly well. So I told her it looked angry and scared, and she should leave it alone. She unlocked the cage, but left the door closed so it wouldn't die. Everyone left the room, kind of angry with me for not letting them have a pet spider. Later on, I had gotten fed up with the party plowing through all my encounters, so I threw a couple of damage casters at them. One of them was extremely lucky, and kept blasting people with lightning, especially the archer, who ended up a few hit points from zero. The caster's turn came up again, and I rolled the damage, enough to one-shot her to death. I didn't want to kill her character outright, so I told her as the lightning bolt flew straight for her heart, at the last minute, the spider jumped out in front of her and took the blast, killing it instantly. Our archer still won't let this one go. Every time I talk about spiders, she gives me the angriest look. I caused a lot of feels that day. I decided I would try and force a player to hide a terrible secret. But I didn't really think it through. In my campaigns, I'll run one-on-one -on -one time with some of the players to further develop their own stories. And most of the characters in this campaign are my friends as first characters, and have been played over the course of four or so years of dungeons. During one of these solo quests, a half-elf sorcerer was captured by a dark being who wanted to see the party of do-gooders taken out. Said villain plants a special burrowing worm in the sorcerer's head while he's unconscious. The sorcerer is informed that the worm will allow the villain to see the locations of the party at any given time. If he so much as hints to the others in his guild that he has been compromised, the worm will release a burst of arcane energy, shattering his skull and killing anyone nearby. The sorcerer takes this all in, quietly. Then he is blindfolded and gagged and let free in an open field outside of town so that he may return to the hideout and begin spying for the treacherous enemy. He is quiet for a few moments. And then he asks me about a spell we added and allows him to create a torch by creating a point of intense light and heat at the point of his choosing. I can cast it anywhere I choose, right? I reply, I suppose, but it's midday, so I'm not sure why you think you'd need it. I'm casting it, and I'm targeting beneath my skull, he says, without even flinching. All things considered, I knew I couldn't stop him, but I had never considered he would take this course. So, there alone in a windy bean field, he fell to his knees and met his end. We were pretty strict about keeping character knowledge separate from player knowledge, so no one else in the guild ever found out about his sacrifice. He just 
showed up next Sunday night with a new character sheet and had me introduce his new character. TLDR, a friend of mine decided he would rather commit suicide than allow his character to become a sleeper agent for the enemy. His party never found out. This happened a week ago, and it destroyed me emotionally. I'm a half-orc druid, and Radoth was my trainer. Early on, he invited me to the Emerald Enclave. It gave me direction, and he was always kinder to me than any other NPC was. The group fought werewolves at some point, and I got bit. I'd been really excited about it since I had a lot of fun with my werewolf character in Numenera. Fast forward and my bro was being stupid and was going to be assimilated into that underground tree thing, dying in the process. Later, some dryad said if I cut off my arm in some ritual, I could have his corpse back to res later. So I do, and I play as a one-armed circle of the moon druid. I'm not as useful as I was, but I try to contribute. We were down there for like six months in-game and four months IRL, hundreds of feet below the ground. It's like we disappeared off the face of the planet. I'd been the only one who wanted to leave. One of us had died, and we completed all the quests we went in there with. I wanted to get back above ground and even tried unsuccessfully to send animal messengers to Radoth a few times. When I finally got out, first thing I do after dumping my friend's corpse at a temple with all my gold is go to the Thunder Tree. Radoth had been so worried, he said he'd been sending animal messengers, but none of them could reach me. I tell him I'm okay, except for my arm and the werewolf thing, but that I want to try to control it. He says that I could help the Enclave research it. He offers to fix my arm before anything else, and I accept. Before it was completely finished, sprouts started growing out of my arm, and I heard a huge voice boom, Oathbreaker, in my head, and I lost control. It was a curse from when I had to cut off my own arm, and at that moment, I fully succumbed to the wolf for the first time, and the last thing I saw was his fearful expression. I tore him to shreds, ate him, and then I blacked out. Woke up a few days later to what little remained of him, then entered a state of fugue for the rest of the level up training period, consumed by the wolf, wandering the woods. I almost started to cry. Some of the group was shocked, some laughing. I still haven't recovered from it and time's been going at a slow crawl waiting for the next session on Wednesday. 